Hi, I'm Garvel. Welcome to our telehealth video series. In this video, I will give a brief overview of what you need to know about cervical cancer. In particular, I will cover what is cervical cancer, how you treat it, and how you can better live with cervical cancer and manage symptoms better on a day-to-day -day basis. So we start with what it is. Cervical cancer is one of the most common cancers that affect a woman's reproductive organs. Various strains of the human papillomavirus or HPV, a sexually transmitted infection, play a role in causing most cases of cervical cancer. When exposed to the HPV virus, a woman's immune system typically prevents the virus from doing harm. In a small group of women, however, the virus survives for years before it eventually converts some cells on the surface of the cervix into cancer cells. Cervical cancer occurs most often in women over age 30. Thanks largely to pap test screening, the death rate from cervical cancer has decreased greatly over the last 50 years. And today, most cases of cervical cancer can be prevented with a vaccine for young women. So the symptoms. You may not experience any cervical cancer symptoms. Early cervical cancer generally produces no signs or symptoms. This is why regular screening is so important. As the cancer progresses, the following signs and symptoms of advanced, more advanced cancer may appear. Vaginal bleeding after intercourse, between periods or after menopause, watery bloody vaginal discharge that may be heavy and have a foul odor, pelvic pain or pain during intercourse. So the causes, in general, cancer begins when healthy cells acquire a genetic mutation that turns normal cells into abnormal cells. Healthy cells grow and multiply at a set rate, eventually dying at a set time. Cancer cells grow and multiply out of control and they don't die. The accumulating abnormal cells form a mass or a tumour. Cancer cells invade nearby tissues and can break off from initial tumour to spread elsewhere in the body or metastasize. There are two main types of cervical cancer. There's squamous cell cancer or carcinomas begin in the thin flat cells that line the bottom of the cervix. This type accounts for 80 to 90% of cervical cancers and adenocarcinomas occur in the glandular cells that line the upper portion of the cervix. These cancers make up 10 to 20% of cervical cancers. Sometimes both types of cells are involved in cervical cancer. Very rare cancers can occur in other cells in the cervix. What causes squamous cells or glandular cells to become abnormal and develop into cancer isn't clear. However, it's certain that the sexually transmitted infection called human papillomavirus or HPV plays a role. Evidence of HPV is found in nearly all cervical cancers. However, HPV is a very common virus and most women with HPV never develop cervical cancer. This means other risk factors, such as your genetic makeup, your environment, or your lifestyle choices, also determine whether you'll develop cervical cancer. These factors may increase your risk of cervical cancer. Many sexual partners. The greater your number of sexual partners, and the greater your partner's number of sexual partners, the greater your chance of acquiring HPV. Early sexual activity, so having sex before age 18 increases your risk of HPV. Immature cells seem to be more susceptible to the precancerous change that HPV can cause. Other sexually transmitted diseases, or STDs. If you have other STDs such as chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis or HIV, the greater your chance is also of developing HPV. A weak immune system, so most women who are infected with HPV never develop cervical cancer. However, if you have an HPV infection and your immune system is weakened by another health condition, you may be more likely to develop cervical cancer. Cigarette smoking, so smoking and HPV infection may work together to cause cervical cancer. So how is cervical cancer treated? A limited, non-invasive cancer treatment of cervical cancer that's confined to the outside layer of the cervix typically requires treatments to remove the abnormal area of cells. For most women in this situation, no additional treatments are needed. Procedures to remove non-invasive cancer include cone biopsy or conization. During the surgery, the doctor uses a scalpel to remove a cone-shaped piece of cervical tissue where the abnormality is found. Laser surgery, 
This operation uses a narrow beam of intense light to kill cancerous and precancerous cells and a loop electrosurgical excision procedure. This technique uses a wire loop to pass electric current which cuts like a surgeon's knife and removes cells from the mouth of the cervix in cryosurgery. This technique involves freezing and killing cancerous and precancerous cells. And hysterectomy, this major surgery involves removal of the cancerous and precancerous areas, the cervix and the uterus. So invasive cancers, cervical cancer that invades deeper than the outside layer of the cells in the cervix is referred to as invasive cancer and requires more extensive treatment. Treatment for cervical cancer depends on several factors such as the stage of the cancer, other health problems you may have and your own preferences about treatment. So treatment options include surgery. Surgery to remove the uterus, which is a hysterectomy, is typically used to treat the early stages of cervical cancer. Hysterectomy can cure early stage cervical cancers and prevent cancer from coming back, but removing the uterus makes it impossible to become pregnant. Next is radiation. Radiation therapy uses high powered energy to kill cancer cells. Chemotherapy uses strong anti-cancer medicines to kill cancer cells. And how do you live with cervical cancer? You can reduce your risk of cervical cancer by taking measures to prevent HPV infection. HPV spreads through skin-to-skin -skin contact with any infected part of the body, not just during intercourse. Use a condom every time you have sex in order to reduce your risk of contacting HPV. In addition to using condoms, the best ways to prevent cervical cancer are delay first intercourse, have fewer sexual partners and avoid smoking. And also get vaccinated against HPV. A vaccine called Gardasil offers protection from the most dangerous types of HPV, the virus that causes most cervical cancers. The National Advisory Committee of Immunization Practices recommends Routine vaccination for girls aged 11 and 12, as well as girls and women ages 13 to 26 if they haven't received the vaccine already. The vaccine is the most effective if given to girls before they become sexually active. Although the vaccine could prevent up to 70% of cervical cancer cases, it can prevent infection with every virus that causes cervical cancer. Routine pap tests to screen for cervical cancer remain important. Have routine pap tests. So routine pap tests are the most effective way to detect cervical cancer in the earliest stages. Work with your doctor to determine the best schedule for pap tests. Finally, there are numerous products available at Lynch's Pharmacy in Douglas and Cork to assist in managing symptoms more effectively on a day-to-day -day basis. To start with, we have numerous products to get you up and running on a gentle exercise programme, such as an exercise ball, floor mats, weights and other items to get you up and running. We also have various supplements and products which you can purchase from us without a prescription, such as lavender and lemongrass oil for de-stressing and relaxing. Plus we stock light boxes to promote relaxation, blood pressure monitors, blood sugar monitors and body fat monitors to monitor your health. So that brings this video to an end. Customers of Lynch's Pharmacy can avail of a brand new offering at Telehealth Clinic. You can book a 30 minute clinic with us and we help increase your understanding of your illness. During a clinic, together we create a cohesive management plan which enables you to take a more active role in managing your illness with confidence. We provide you with the tools you need to live a healthy life. Call into us at Lynch's Pharmacy in Douglas and Cork or call 021 436 to find out more. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy and stay informed.